These are the steel convector radiators. This is the one that I had in one of my videos last year, which was disconnected, and I actually had it sitting on one of the floors as I did the video. And as you currently hear, the steam is starting to come up now. Now that she has cleared her throat, let me give you a little explanation. Um, this steel convector that you're looking at right here, this was the radiator that I had hooked up in this video last year. I believe that I showed a very, very brief clip or glimpse of this radiator in action. Um, I decided to take it out because there's nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly good uh, in well working condition and I didn't throw it out because it works perfectly fine. But this radiator is, as you can see, this is six inches deep. It has three steam or water columns. And this one here is eight inches deep, leaving it with four steam columns or water columns. In this case, I'm running steam heat, so this is what it uses. Um, both of them are the exact same length. Just this one is a little deeper, so it throws off a little more BTUs of heat and then warm up the heat the uh, room just a little bit faster and give it a stronger quality of heat. So I decided to go with this one. Um, now, you, I pointed this out a little while ago. This is the uh, gate valve connection setup that I have. Now, normally people don't usually do installations like this for various reasons. Number one, these gate valves, I really don't recommend people using them unless they know how to tweak them because their quality is not of the best quality. But the reason why I decided to install it, because me personally, I like the way they look. So I just decided to slap it in the system. And I know how to tweak them so they work to my advantage. And I had to do some fine tuning to get it to, uh, or to seal any potential leaks that it might have. Like meaning that I had to take out the spindle and pack that with Teflon tape in order to get a proper seal and to keep it from not leaking. And as you can see, the threads going into the radiator is wrapped with Teflon tape and I use a little uh, pipe dope. Now, normally people wouldn't put this type of installation on this radiator or this type of cutoff valve. They used to use some older gate valves a long time ago that had a union piece that went at the bottom and then you just screwed it in with a nipple or in certain cases it had two different union pieces because number one, you don't really have a lot of turning space to be able to turn this valve. That's how close it normally is to the wall. Um, so normally what I do is I just take the spindle out and then I, I tighten in my cutoff valve and connect it. Now, how do I go about getting this in? Normally, you would have to use a radiator spud wrench, and which I do, but since I know that I can encounter situations like this, I like to be prepared for all different types of situations. These are the collection of uh, radiator spud wrenches that I have. Now, as you can see, I got them cut to various different lengths, and I think I'd, I'm sure I have another one in here lying around that's of the full length, but the reason why I cut them down is for reasons like this. You know on, that, on your average basis that you have to use a radiator cutoff wrench to tightly snug the uh, nipple from the cutoff valve into the radiator. But look at the length of this cutoff valve and then look at the height of the radiator. The radiator is maybe around two and a half, two inches in height and in, uh, in size altogether. So when you go to put this size in here now, you're going down to inch and a quarter and that would be at the lowest point of the, uh, or the lowest length of the radiator, of the radiator spud wrench. So when you go to reach into an inch and a quarter, as you take a look, I'm barely now getting into the to the uh, nipple of the radiator, but look how much the wrench is exceeding past the radiator. That would never work, so that's another reason why I cut them to various different lengths. If I'm working with a cast iron element, I know I can run into that same problem as well. So what I did was I decided to buy multiple different wrenches for that purpose. And as you can see, what I did was cut this down to the second lowest length which is inch and a quarter and then you have the this uh, slot where you 
attach your wrench to and then you tighten it in. But as you look at it, when you go to screw it in, you can get a perfect snug and, and still get the wrench barely at the bottom or maybe just an inch or half of an inch up inside of the radiator column. Something else I also wanted to mention briefly about steel convectors. Um, these are Govan Alley radiators. These, was, these were made originally by Govan Alley. You might be able to see some of the writing on the radiator itself past the Russ, Brooklyn, New York. And the other side. But these are Govan Alley radiators. You can see on the bottom, same writing. Now these radiators, I got, I bought this one used a couple of years back at a plumbing supply store. They had it sitting inside of a cover. I guess somebody had uh, decided to send it back to the plumbing supply store after using it. It was hooked up to a hot water system. And I guess they, instead of throwing it in the garbage, they decided to give it back to a plumbing supply store. Which I thought was a very good idea because one man's garbage is the next man's treasure. And this one here I found inside of an apartment building. And the super was kind enough to allow me to take it because it was garbage and I decided to use it because I seen that it can still work and it works beautifully. The only problem with this one is the connection that they have. And normally the connection, this is nothing I forgot to mention about this. Normally another or a very common connection that you would see for this type of radiator is not a straight connection in here, which you see I had to offset it with 245 street L's. But normally what you would see is pretty much a nipple that comes out of the radiator, an elbow, and then a piece of pipe that leads into the cutoff valve and then it will come and drop back into the ground from that point on. I didn't use that option because I didn't really have a whole lot of room to do it. But I'm getting, I'm getting just a little off topic with that. Let me explain the reason why I chose to go with used, used radiators in this case because Govan Alley, I hope my camera is folding up. Okay. Govan Alley used to make their own radiators and now it seems like from whatever reason that they're getting imported radiators and I don't know exactly where these radiators come from but they're very cheap looking I really don't like the design they're not made with the same build quality you take a look at the fins on the radiator you know very well intact it looks it's very it, um, it looks very impressive it looks like it was built to quality built to standards and this is quality that I'm not seeing in Govan Alley anymore just when you look at the top of this 8 inch convector, the sections are all built to quality, they're built to standard. Now Govan Alley, for whatever reason, when they get these imported radiators, you're also losing a, a decent amount of BTUs because a lot of the sections, you're missing about a good 5 to 6 fins on the radiator before the fin sections even start up. So pretty much what you got is these pieces of pipe, and without the fins, anybody knows that the radiator doesn't even give off half as much heat as it would with the amount of fins. So with these radiators you get more fins and you get um, better heating and that's another reason why I chose to just go with used stuff. I'm the type of guy that will refurbish a lot of radiators because I still see the potential in a lot of these older radiators and they work a lot better or in certain cases just give off more heat. Let me start off by explaining the advantages when it comes down to steel convectors. Steel convector radiators have the advantage, well this one here is about 8 inches deep and this can give you equivalent to what your average cast iron radiator will give you as far as BTUs and heat is concerned. They heat up excessively fast, in most cases these radiators can heat up within the first 30 seconds or under a minute and I've seen it happen on numerous different occasions. They give off a lot of heat very fast, they don't take nearly as long to heat up as a cast iron radiator so you start to feel the heat instantly. If you're running a hot water system, it might take a little longer because if that boiler is cold and the water is cold inside of the system, the water has to actually circulate through the boiler a few times before it actually reaches a certain temperature. And we all know that steam, once it's already boiling and in the form of steam, that it's already a hot substance, so it doesn't really take a whole lot. All it pretty much has to do is infiltrate the radiator that is heating. And one of the reasons why it heats it up so fast because there's really not a whole lot of space inside of the radiator. It's just a matter of water columns that it pretty much passes through and it can run through this in a matter of seconds. Some of the disadvantages when it comes down to steel convectors. These radiators do not hold heat at all, period. You might have just a little bit more of an advantage if you're running hot water heat in these radiators, but steam, you really don't have an advantage with that at all. And even with hot water heat, it's only by minutes that it actually holds a little heat because they'll cool down very fast. And one of the reasons 
why they cool down so fast is because of these fins. These fins are meant to draw the heat out of the water columns or the steam columns and distribute it into the room as fast as possible. So these are the disadvantages of steel convectors. Even though I do recommend them, they're a very good radiator. They go inside of the wall. Some people might not like the way they look, or but pretty much you shouldn't even care about how they look because you can't even see them, as a matter of fact, because they're resuscitated and they're pretty much out of sight. Now, if you're running a steel convector on a one-pipe steam heating system, the best air vent that I recommend that you use, as you see right here, is a Hoffman air vent. Some people will go ahead and try to do a faster venting when it comes down to the radiator and put a quicker release vent on there. And I don't recommend that you do that by any circumstances. You can go with your average Hoffman air vent and that will vent the radiator perfectly fine. By no means necessary should you ever use a larger size Gordon air vent. And this is a number one air vent. Never go with this size on this type of radiator. Also, I just caught wind of one of these air vents. This is a Hoffman air vent, but as you see, it has a much larger opening. This is a downfall when it comes down to these air vents. The only type of venting that you really want to have is a Hoffman with the average size air vent. That's more than enough to work for one of these steel convectors. It takes little to no steam to actually heat these up. And even if you go with a Gordon's air vent, use one of a smaller size. And I'm gonna explain to you exactly why. Each air vent has its own personality and characteristics. You might think that I'm crazy when I'm saying this, but this is something that people really need to pay attention to. Gordon air vents can work substantially well, but certain things can work against them. In this case, when you're dealing with a Gordon air vent of this size, with the opening of that size, and even with a Hoffman opening of this size, even though these are, Hoffman is the best, most sufficient venter out of all air valves. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second. A common problem that happens with Gordon's air vents, and if you install these on a steel convector radiator, the key thing to keeping a steel convector radiator hot and consistent heat is consistent flow of steam infiltrating the radiator. Fresh steam infiltrating the radiator. Now understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying you want to put an air vent on here that constantly pisses out steam. But the way this air vent works is the way it's, it's supposed to run or pretty much the best way that I can establish some type of sufficient steam inside of the radiator. Every couple of minutes or every so often in the heat cycle, this air vent will release to, let, to allow fresh steam back into the radiator so all the cold steam that's sitting inside and condensating gets pushed out, or the vapors I should say, get pushed out to the back of the radiator and out the air vent and once it reaches a certain temperature where the fresh steam allows it to infiltrate and actually heat up the air vent to approximate temperature, the vent will lock back out. In this case, it's not even a matter of the vent not working properly but one thing that works against Gordon air vents and any air vent that has a substantially larger opening is that these air vents have a float inside of them. These floats, when you turn them upside down, the gravity will hold them in a locked position. But the large air vent will allow the air to pass through the radiator fast and allow the steam to get through faster than anything else. But once that pressure starts to build up in one of these air vents, the problem that you're going to have is that the pressure is also going to uh, work through the gravity and it will keep the float in a locked position so basically you will not have any steam that will be able to pass through this and what you'll have eventually is you'll notice that your steel convector will start to get colder and you can have the radiator at maximum pressure and there'll be tons of pressure inside of the radiator no matter how, no matter how much steam pressure you send up no matter how many times you turn up that thermostat no matter how much you adjust the cutoff valve here it's not going to make a difference in this here because it's already set in a locked position the only way to really thoroughly get steam through there is to let your system die out as far as steam pressure is concerned and then start it back up again but rather than go through all that the smartest thing you can do is just go with a regular Hoffman air vents which will be more than enough now when I'm talking about when I say Hoffman air vents you can't really get a look at the one that I have here because it's in action. Let me see, well, it's a little too dark, but let me show you another one of this size. This is all you really need. This small, this average um, size right here will take care of it. I gotta see the number of this thing. Uh, I think it's t -t -t -t. number 41, okay? So this is all you need. Now the key thing you, you should know about Hoffman air vents is that they are the most sufficient as well as efficient 
but the most sufficient. Gordon and Hoffman are just as efficient, except Gordon might have the tendency to last a lot longer. The way they make in Hoffman Air Vents now, for whatever reason, they don't seem to last the same way. In certain cases, you got to monitor them because they can go bad on you, and you'll get steam pissing out of the air vent. But the one that I have on here is an older air vent. I took it off of this radiator here because when it was on this radiator, it worked magnificently well. So I decided to put it right back on this one rather than going to buy a whole new one, even though i got tons of them lying around. But this one seems to function the best, so I decided to put that one on there. Now, what, I'm, what I mean when I say this Hoffman valves have their own personality. In certain cases, they'll have a lock mechanism, so when the steam hits it, it'll just lock out. And then when it's time for it to open back up or to release to vent out the air, it'll just pop open, like you heard the radiator currently doing in this video. This radiator here, what it would wind up doing, or this air vent, in certain cases, you'll have a situation where the vent is releasing, and what'll happen, instead of it locking out, it'll slowly get quieter and quieter as the heat cycle goes on or you might just occasionally hear it mildly venting just a real gentle hissing sound nothing that you can even notice unless you're pretty much right up on the radiator so that's some of the personalities and characteristics when it comes down to Hoffman air vents a very good characteristic is an air vent that is not selfish an air vent that will actually open up to vent out your radiator because that keeps fresh steam inside of it and it allows the cold steam to condensate back in the water and whatever leftover vapors or gases are still inside of the radiator. It is just freely allowed to escape. So this is something else that you want to keep in mind when it comes down to venting of your radiator. You want to make sure that you have proper equipment. You want to make sure you have equipment that works sufficiently that doesn't have a problem with allowing fresh steam to get back inside of the radiator. That way you get maximum BTUs out of the radiator. It doesn't really matter how much steam pressure is in the radiator. If your venting is not working properly or sufficiently, all the pressure in the world is not going to make much of a difference because you're going to still have the same outcome when it comes down to the heat loss and the BTU. So that's my little insight on this and I'll do a couple of other videos on some cast iron radiators and some valves and give people a larger understanding.